Hey there everyone, Hatesh here, your programming friend from YouTube and in today's quick video, we are going to talk about online payments. Now this online payment video is not about integrating any payment gateway into a services of Node.js, WordPress or maybe any other kind of thing. In the previous days, I used to just read the documentation about payment gateway, integrate them with my client services and that's it. Nothing of that for on forward is not my headache. But just two years ago, I learned a lot about payment gateways, their system architecture and how everything works. So I think it's a good time that I should share with this, uh, with all of this with you. If you make any kind of online payment, whether that's on Paytm or whether that's on PayPal, whether that's on Amazon, Flipkart, LearnCode Online or any other online services, this is something that everybody should know. It's going to make you a smart consumer and is going to help you to predict how the system actually work. So let's get started with the online payments. First and foremost, you never, never ever make any payment directly to the website owner. For example, if you're buying from Amazon or maybe if you're buying from uh, Zomato, Swiggy, LearnCode Online, you don't make payment directly to us. You make payment to the payment gateways and this is where things get a little bit tricky. When you make payment through the payment gateway, we as a service provider we have some negotiation with these payment uh, these uh, payment gateways and we have a deal they say is that we are going to release your payment every third day every fifth day or maybe every 30 days depends on how much you are able to negotiate with them now they only send us a viable token to us you make payment to them a payment gateways they capture your payment keep the payment with them and send us just a token this token is good enough to make sure that, hey, we got our payment technically because payment gateway gets that and we just says, hey, release the product. So we release the product based on that and payment gateway uh, gets us the payment after every three days or maybe 30 days depends on negotiation. Now, one more thing that you need to know here about payment gateways is that we as a service provider have to file up a lot of paperwork and they do a thorough check before releasing these payment gateways. Now, these payment gateways are something if you have done any kind of online shopping is pretty common to all of you. Now, some of the names are here, uh, Braintree, which is also known as PayPal. So if you have done any kind of payment through PayPal, that's the payment gateway which is working here. Stripe is pretty common on the international services. It is widely accepted. Recently, they are trying to make their uh, routes into India as well. I hope they make so. Another one is Razorpay. If you have shopped any time on LearnCode Online, you might have seen these guys. Instamojo, if you are early adopter of LearnCode Online, you might have seen that as well. EBS to check out and there are plenty of others as well. Now, recently, Paytm is also a payment gateway, but reminds you here that not every wallet is a payment gateway. That's not true. So let's move forward. Now, the big issue is when there is a payment being made by you, it goes through with variety of states. Now, depends on which state you are. These are the only one which you are going to face. Now, let me walk you through what these are. First one is failed, second is captured in success, third is authorized, also mixed with late authorized, and finally the refund. So let's get started and talk quickly about them. The first one is failed. Now failed for a service provider for payment gateway is totally okay. We are not bothered much about it because when you make a payment, you get a notification that payment was failed, bank gets a notification of payment failed, payment gateway notification is also failed and our notification is failed, means everybody is on same page. The reason for failure is can be of variety of different things. For example, incorrect card number, incorrect name, as printed on your card, you have to enter exactly that same, insufficient balance. And especially in India, we do have a third phase of security, which is a pin is generated on a mobile phone and you have to enter that correctly. And sometimes payment is not completed on time. If payment is not gonna be completed on time, the token is not gonna be released to your payment services and hence a failure. That is all okay because everybody is on same page. The next one is captured and success. Although a lot happens between this captured and success, but all we care about is everybody is on same page, everybody is happy because payment is being made. Things get actually messier when it comes to the authorization or late authorization. Now, here's a quick image and image credit goes to Razorpay because they have made it. Now, let me walk you through how things actually goes on because this is actually messier. Now, when a customer tries to make an attempt of making a payment, it 
goes through through your bank here. Now, when your bank at the first time, they say is no. Now, this no can be with variety of reason and interruption. Probably your network is not good. Probably bank is having some issue, but this happens quite a lot. Bank says a no notification to raise or pay. But somehow, few minutes later, few hours later, bank says, hey, that was okay. That payment is all good. So you get a deduction of payment from your bank account and it reaches to the payment gateway. But we as a service provider, whatever the website is, is still on the no notification. After some time, the payment failed. This is the first notification here. And after some time, we get an authorization. This is not an equivalent of success. This is an authorization. This simply means bank has authorized that somebody has made a payment and we have cleared your authorization for this particular payment. Later on, it, up, it just goes and says, hey, as a service provider, you have to manually go and authorize and capture that payment. So you, as who somebody has made the payment, gets a notification that my balance was deducted, but still I haven't got the services because of the interruption of the bank as well as of the, these uh, payment gateways. Now further, when manually we check out all these logs and uh, finds out that there was an authorized payment, we manually go and capture these payments. And this brings us the late authorization. Now this late authorization is later captured into success and now everybody's on same page because we know about these captures. Uh, we capture the payment and payment goes to the payment gateway and you get your services. So this is a little bit tricky, but yes, this happens quite a lot. And this is not like something which happens once in a month. It happens probably every single day. Big companies do keep their employees busy in these authorization. And whenever an authorization comes up, they get a notification and somebody manually captures those payment. But for small scale companies, they check their logs every 12 hours or 48 hours or depends on however they are working on. Now, this is all about things, but one thing you should know about your payment is usually safe and almost always safe because if it is not being captured, the authorized payment, the default of the payment gateway is to refund those payments into your bank account after three days or 30 days, depends on how much uh, you are negotiating. Usually it's three to four working days. Now, this is uh, all the issues that I wanted to talk about these things. Now, one thing is still remaining, which is refunds. The refunds highly depends on the policies of your service provider. Uh, for example, policies of Flipkart, policies of Amazon, policies of LearnCode Online. But there is a lot that goes on with the refund. There is a lot of manual work. There is a lot of bank work that needs to go. And your refunds are never, never going to be instant, just like you make a payment. You expect that I made a payment, it was instant, so the refund should be instant. But it doesn't work like that because of the interruption and the intermediate parties like banks as well as the payment gateways. So if you want me to make a thorough video about refund because it definitely requires a separate video, just notify me in the comment section that you would like to learn more about the refund process that happens online. It requires a lot of diagrams as well. So if you want me to do that, just notify me in the comment section and that's it, your quick video about online payment gateways which Everybody who may who shops online should be aware of this. In case you think somebody nearby you, your parents or your friends, do make online payments, buys anything online, do share it with them so that they can be more educated about how actually everything works in the world of online payments. So that's it for this video. In case you are new here, hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel and I'm going to catch you up in the next video.